I'm working on a project that requires fast communication between an Arduino and a browser, say on a computer or a phone. I ultimately want the Arduino to act as a server, and I need data to be able to be transmitted from the server to the client without the client making any requests. So, a WebSocket is a good tool for this job. The WebSocket protocol has been around since 2010, and it provides full duplex communication over TCP. It operates outside of HTTP, but it can work on ports 80 and 443, which is good if you're behind a firewall that blocks other ports. A WebSocket does not have a lot of the overhead normally found in things like HTTP, which makes it great for things like browser-based multiplayer games. But, of course, I want to get it working on an Arduino. To make the networking side easy, I'm going to use an ESP32. Specifically, an Adafruit Huzzah32, but any ESP32 that's supported in the Arduino IDE should work. Open up the Arduino IDE. Make sure you have the ESP32 board manager URL from Espressif listed, and install the ESP32 board package in the boards manager. In the library manager, search for and install the WebSockets library from Marcus Settler. I've installed version 2.1.2 just in case things change from the time I made this video. At the top, include the Wi-Fi and WebSockets server libraries. We'll store our Wi-Fi SSID and password in some strings and create a WebSockets server object. Note that we're telling the server to listen on port 80 here. The interesting part of the WebSockets server is that we'll need to create a callback function, which is called inside the WebSockets library. The library is looking for a function with specific parameters. Num is the assigned number of the client that has connected. I believe the library can handle up to five clients. It wants the type of message, which we'll use to determine how to handle each message. The payload, which is just the data as raw bytes. And finally, it needs to know how many bytes are in the data. Whenever a new piece of data or client request arrives, the library will automatically handle parsing it or assigning the client a new number. Then, we'll get the option of doing an additional something in our code here. If a client disconnects, we'll just print it to our serial console. We'll do the same if we get a new client connection, but we'll also print the client's IP address. Finally, while WebSockets supports raw binary data transmissions, we'll just worry about handling text transmissions, which we'll print to the console. To test our server, we'll just echo this text back to our client with the WebSocket.sendTXT. For this test, we'll just ignore the other types of messages. In setup, we need to start our serial port and connect to the Wi-Fi access point. Once connected, we'll print out the server's IP address to the console. After that, using the WebSockets library is pretty easy. Just call WebSocket.begin to start the server and assign our callback with onEvent. In loop, we add WebSocket.loop, which looks for and handles any incoming WebSocket data from clients. It also calls our callback with any new transmission received. That's it. Select our ESP32 board and the correct serial port. Upload it and open a console. Once the ESP32 connects to your local access point, it should print out its own IP address. Save that because we'll need it for the next part. A good way to test the server is to create a web page with some WebSocket code in it, but that's a pain, so let's just whip something up in Python. In a new terminal, enter pip install WebSocket-client. This assumes, of course, that you have Python already installed on your computer. In a new text document, import the WebSocket module, create a new WebSocket, and assign it to a handle, then connect to the IP address we got from the server. To test our simple echo server, we're just going to ask the user for input and send that out over the WebSocket connection. Then, we wait to receive the response and print it to the screen. After that, close out the connection. Make sure your computer is connected to the same network as your ESP32. I'm going to use this WRT54G to create a test network because reasons. I'm going to fire up Wireshark in the background so we can see what's going on. With the WebSocket server running, start your Python script. In the server console, you should see a message stating that a new client has connected. In Wireshark, you can see the TCP handshake followed by the WebSocket handshake, which means we have a connection. Type a message in the terminal and it should be echoed right back at you. The server console should show you this message and you can see it in plain text on Wireshark as well. 
The Arduino Wi-Fi and WebSocket libraries are pretty robust when it comes to dropped connections. For example, let's start a new connection from our client to our server. And then let's pretend the network goes down. Oops. I'll plug the router back in and wait for the wireless LAN to come back up. Make sure your computer is connected to the network again and try sending your message. It should fail. If you look at the server console, you should see that it gracefully dropped the client without us having to do anything. Try the Python script again and you should have no problem connecting to the server and sending a message. I did all this without interacting or restarting the ESP32. This shows that the ESP32 can handle packet and connection losses without a problem, which is great news for my project. If you've been following along and you'd like to see the complete code, check out the link in the description. I'll continue posting updates as I make progress on my project. Happy hacking!